Okay, so as with any sort of modeling application questions, it's just a key case of applying the same mathematical skills that we've had just in answering you know, questions A, B, C, to using those skills, but keeping in mind we're talking about a, a real situation or a real problem, okay? So is there anything, read the question through carefully and identify the, the key term. So we've got a square, a square tin of paper, so there's the dimensions of my paper, 12 by 12. Four equal squares of edge X are cut out of the corners of the sides are turned up to form a rectangular box. So we can see our box here, and we can see we've even highlighted the dimensions there. So the dimensions, we've got a height of X, a length of 12 minus X, and obviously because it's a square, it's a, another length of 12 minus X. Find the volume of the box in terms of X. So with most of these sorts of problems, we're given that we have to find the volume of a box, the volume of a cylinder, a cube maybe. Um, so in this case, it's a box. And so let's start here with A. Volume is length times width by height, which is 12 minus 2x times 12 minus 2x times the height of x. So there's my volume. All right, now we might try and tidy up a fraction. Two is common to that first bracket. So we might write six minus x. Two is common to that next bracket. We might write six minus x and x. So I get equal to two by two is four. Four times x is four x times, and we've got six minus x squared there. Okay, so there's the volume of my box, all right? Find the volume of the box in terms of X. We've done that, part B. Okay, find the values of X for which the volume is 100. So in other words, I've got to solve this expression equal to 100, okay? And if you, I'll see if I can zoom it up. If we zoom down into our calculator we can see there that that blue line is where the calculator uh, the volume is 100 and we can see it's at the point where x is 1 and where x is 3.21 so if i bring those back down to the correct size and just try and straighten it up a little bit um, We're stuck with a bit crooked okay so we can since nearly all modeling we've got a calculator so i'm going to go with uh just trying to use my features of solve 4x times 6 minus x squared oops x all squared equal to 100 for x and that gives me x is equal to 1 or X is equal to, what did I say it was? 3.21. Okay. Use a case to draw the graph of V against X for all suitable values of X. So obviously you can see the, the calculator CAS result there. We could probably have done a, a fair job of it without the CAS. Um, if we consider, I might come across, uh, y-intercept would occur when x is equal to zero and clearly if i put x equal to zero the volume is also equal to zero makes perfect sense if um this is no height or depth to my box where there can't be a volume get my x intercepts i'll put the volume equal to zero which means i solve volume equal to 4x times 6 minus x squared oops 6 minus x all squared so clearly x is equal to zero or x is equal to six. So we go two, four, six, zero. If I was going to sketch the graph, um, we know that six minus x is a repeated factor. So at x equal to six, we have a turning point. All right. So normally, and I'll sketch the full graph for now, my graph, if I just sketch it the way in which um, we've been asked to, we have got a positive cubic, so we'll come up, 
a turning point somewhere, we don't know where, we come down to six and then we would head back up again. All right. But this is where the modeling part of it comes in. Our model, our X values, well, the two things, the volume has to be greater than or equal to zero. And our um, depth has to be greater than or equal to zero. Well, I'll go, we'll go strictly greater than zero, I reckon. This is always a little bit contentious, but I'm going to go round zero, round zero, because we can't have a box if we don't have a volume. So that's the reason why I'm not going to allow the volume to be zero. There's the volume, there's my X. Okay, the turning point, no idea. We have to use our calculator here. Um, and you can see down here, I probably asked us to do that in um, the next part. We sketch our graph, we can graph trace it, or we can go to the menu and analyze the graph. And we can see the maximum occurs there when X is equal to two. Uh, the maximum volume box occurs when X is equal to two and the maximum volume, if you zoom in on that value there, I'm hoping that's one, two, eight. Okay, so with our modeling, we tend to use our calculator a lot. And um, so it's just being able to sketch our graph, get it on the right axis, zoom the dimensions in correctly, and um, more importantly, sketch our graph over an appropriate domain. Because the calculator, when it sketches that graph, it'll just do that. It'll sketch the whole thing. You then need to translate it into a suitable domain for you.